In the late 1980s, 3D printing was a much bigger deal. Well, literally. And really, what wasn't bigger in the 80s? Up until the last five years or so, 3D printers were almost exclusively large, expensive machines used in research labs, aerospace, and other design-intensive industries. Of course, large, expensive industrial 3D printers still exist, but a new wave of companies are aiming to bring consumer-sized 3D printing right to your home. 3D printed objects start life as a data file. This could come from a hobbyist site like Thingiverse or something you've created yourself with the right software. The file is transferred via USB, SD, or Wi-Fi to the printer, where final size and printing settings can be adjusted. Many desktop 3D printers consist of an outer build box and a mobile build plate inside. The build plate moves vertically, starting up high and working its way down, as each layer of the object is printed by a robotic print head. Some models reverse the process with a stationary build plate and a mobile print head. At the heart of the print head is the all-important extruder. It works a lot like a hot glue gun, melting a long coil of corn-derived renewable plastic called PLA at around 230 degrees Celsius, and then applying or printing it onto the object. Other plastics, like ABS, can also be used. The print head starts by making an outline of the first layer. Then the outline is filled in with a cross-hatched pattern. The build plate moves down, and the next layer is outlined and filled, layer upon layer, until the final object is fully rendered. And that's it. With a 3D printer in the home, you can print almost anything that fits in the build box, from children's toys, household items, and decorative amenities, to replacement parts for gadgets or even your own body. For more information and to download this printable 3D chart, check out wsj.com slash 3D printing.